And welcome back to Richo. Over the recent weeks, it's probably come through to you that I've been a little critical of the Gillard government on a number of issues. And I, I have actually talked about how the left of the Labor Party, the, I remember being the, the, uh, the big group that always had a whinge if they, if they thought something was wrong, have gone remarkably quiet in recent times. So I thought I'd have on one of the leaders of the left, Senator Doug Cameron, who, for whatever else I've ever said about him, he's never been quiet. Um, and I can remember him going back 25 years. This is a bloke who always used to say what was on his mind. Let's find out what's still there. G'day, Doug. How are you? I'm good, Graham. How are you? Look, thanks for coming in. I, I have been... I guess the one issue that crystallises my thoughts on this is the Malaysian solution. Mm. I just have not been able to believe that people like yourself, and it's not only you, I'm, I don't want to personalise it around you, but... It's just been so quiet on, on a policy that I always thought was horrible, just mm -hmm. plain horrible. From a Labor Party point of view, a goff with them or a bob hawk wouldn't have touched it with a barge pole. Mm -hmm. And yet you both yeah. seem to have acquiesced. So I want to ask mm -hmm. you, why did you just meekly agree on, on the Malaysian solution? Well, we didn't. And uh, consistently in caucus, I argued against it. Uh, I publicly argued against it. Uh, the party's made a decision that it wants to pursue the Malaysian approach. Uh, I think one thing about Malaysia is that it's doing some ha heavy lifting. 90 odd thousand refugees in Malaysia, about 250,000 undocumented people in Malaysia. And I think if we can do something to assist Malaysia on a regional basis, we should. Uh, but I don't think, uh, and I've been consistently consi uh, 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 had a problem with the Malaysian approach. Well, the idea, of, as an example, that you could contemplate sending an unaccompanied minor to the tender mercies of the people in Kuala Lumpur is beyond me completely. Well, they would never have been at the tender mer mercies of uh, people in Kuala Lumpur. There was always going to be some support measures there. Now, whether those support measures were, were going to be effective was the argument that was taking place. And I have to say to you, the UNHCR had argued that this was a good step because Malaysia, for the first time, were engaged that uh, we were going to get a situation where uh, Malaysia were actually going to uh, uh, give some uh, support to refugees within Malaysia. And these were all the arguments that were swirling around at the time. Well, let, let's turn then away from that and, and on to more familiar territory for you, because as, a, as an ex-Metal Workers Union official, yeah. you must be concerned at the state of manufacturing in Australia. And I know that Every time I look at that bloody dollar as it, as it goes up and up yeah. and up, you, you just wonder where manufacturing's mm. going. Because your own union must have been hit pretty hard over the last few years. It has to be, because yep. so many places have closed or are closing. Yeah. Well, it's the typical Dutch disease. The, uh, you know, the resources sector booms, the dollar climbs, and it's tough for uh, manufacturing industry. And that's why we've got to take a position where we ensure that we maximise the jobs in defence, we maximise the jobs in the resource sector, and we make sure that these big mining companies actually, actually uh, locate some of their manufacturing and fabrication work here. Well, I, I note that your union, in concert with the AWU, which is yeah. an interesting combination when one looks They're at history. They're really touchy-feely now, yeah, aren't they? Yeah, I, I just can't quite get used to that. I'm, I stand back and wonder. But anyway, yeah. the two unions approached the government about this, and I think they had a meeting with the Prime Minister, yeah. what, in the last, say, two months? I don't remember the date, yeah. but recently. And it seemed to me they came away with, with nice words, but no promises. Well, what they got was a task force, and there's a task force being established. There's also been uh, a decision by the government that any government grants over $20 million, there has to be a, a statement about how the goods would be uh, uh, accessed within Australia. There's also uh, another approach that any uh, big project worth more than $2 billion, uh, they have to outline how they are going to maximise Australian uh, products in that uh, build. Well, the, the, the reason the government's always give away you can't mandate a, a percentage or, or an amount of, uh, yeah. of the fabrication work to be done here is always that, oh, if we do that, there'll be trouble with other countries that they'll mm -hmm. ever go to. But it seems to me we are uniquely pure around the world in the way this is administered. Mm -hmm. Now, why can't there be some sort of mandatory level at which these mining companies have to participate in, in mm -hmm. using Australian steel? Well, I think the mining companies would go absolutely berserk, and I'm not arguing that that's a reason why we shouldn't do it. But you just look at these mining companies, they don't want to pay one cent more than they absolutely have to in terms of the, the, the goods that they, they, they purchase. Uh, they want to go to the, low, the, the lowest cost international ch uh, chain, and uh, they want to bring them in. 
and I don't think they are acting in the national interest. I don't think they're acting in the interest of the, 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 the companies themselves because if you lose the capacity to train engineering skills in this country, then we will not be able to produce coal. We won't be able to produce minerals. Well, what about having an airline? Because I, oh, I yeah. keep worrying about yeah. Qantas yeah. and whether or not we're going to have those yeah. skills here for that. Well, Qantas' his reputation has been built on their engineering skills and their capacity to provide safe, uh, a safe airline. And uh, members of the AWU and the AMWU have been fundamental uh, in that process. I've had arguments and big blues with Qantas over the years about maintaining uh, jobs in Australia, and they should maintain jobs in Australia. They absolutely should keep the engineering skills here. Well, I, I just, I really worry about the future of that, but you mentioned... Now, you had fights with Qantas, and over the years, I mean, I don't know how long you've been a member of the Metal Workers Union, but it's a long, a long, long time. time. Yeah. What about the future of trade unions in Australia? If, if you look yeah. at the numbers now, who are in trade unions, who are in, shall we say, a private industry, that, those mm -hmm. numbers are very, very yeah. small, and are, I'd have to say getting smaller. Well, the problem has been for my union in particular, and unions like the AWU, uh, AMWU has been big mass... Uh, production workshops, all that work has gone predominantly to China and to Southeast Asia. Uh, free trade agreements, uh, globalisation has meant that a lot of those jobs have gone overseas. We need to look now at what basic engineering skills we need to keep here and we need to build plans to make sure that there's apprenticeships, that kids have got jobs uh, in, in the engineering trades. you have trades. to worry things like the car industry. I don't know how much money yeah. the government spent trying to keep Mitsubishi here, governments, yeah. over yeah, sure. decades, yeah. and they went. And, yeah. and you get the sneaking impression now that Ford are thinking of doing the same yeah. thing. And how long will it be before General Motors do it? Well, I, mean, I hope not. I mean, Mitsubishi, I think one of their problems was the product. I, I don't think their product was up, up to the, the proper standard. But I must say, I think Ford deliver a really good product. So did GMH. They could export those cars anywhere in the world. They are world-class cars. So they've got world-class engineering skills, world-class design skills, and we actually should be looking at how we can maximise this. Everywhere around the world, governments support their manufacturing sector. Why do they do it? Because they create high-skilled, high-paid jobs, and there's flow on jobs r running from it. My conscience is clear. I drive a Falcon. Now, Good. I've got to turn to the Labour Party before I go. You would have expected me to ask something about it. Yeah. Now, in 2007... Labor governed absolutely everywhere, mm -hmm. every state and federal. Yeah. Now, Labor's lost a heap of states, slaughtered in New South Wales, really massacred, un you know, just beaten in, uh, in uh, Victoria, but beaten in Western Australia pretty badly, and now in Queensland, things looking very, very, very grim. What's happened? What went wrong? Well, I, I've argued that uh, I think you need a, an anchor on your values and, and your policy. And you shouldn't just be driven off whenever the wind blows or whenever a storm comes. You actually have to stand by your values and stand by your policies. I think that's been one issue that, that's been a problem for us. When we abandoned uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, climate change policy, you know, I think that was a huge problem for us. When we changed leader... Uh, because we're not doing well in the polls, I think that's a huge problem. I've Are we going to change points. leader again? I don't think so. Uh, I think we'll get. You see, Tony Abbott wants to change leader because Tony Abbott has got to be there for the next two years, and I just don't think the Liberal Party can survive two years with Tony Abbott. Quite frankly, the Libs don't like the Nats, the Nats don't like the Libs, and the Libs hate each other. Uh, so there's a real <laughs> problem there that's just bubbling away under the surface. Well, it's, it's certainly well, well under the surface, but I, I hope you're right about, about things in the Labor Party because I think another leadership change just, just gets too far back to looking like New South Wales. Mm. You get a new leader every six months when you don't like the last one. It yeah. just doesn't work. But, Doug Cameron, I want to thank you very much. I've got to leave it there. Go but up more power to you, Arm. If you can get Labor to have base values again, I'd be delighted. Thank you very much. Good. Thank you. We'll be back in just a moment.